camera. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rock of Carabrin. We are. Never mind. Yes. Yes. Never mind. <laughs> Trying to influence Webby to get into the camera. I think he'd had enough of that after Monday. All right. You'll have, you'll have to watch the Adventures of Brenna to see Webby. Okay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. So. Last time you guys were on the road a lot as you uh, traveled down the King's Road and then the Grubenshine uh, Road, I believe it's, or Grubenshine Trail, I'll get it right yet, uh, and traveled between Port Tim to Hellerfluss, a small community, well, small town, I guess I should say, in near the Great Woods and close to the Dragon's Teeth Mountains. These uh, woods had had an orc incursion, which uh, you guys were pursuing because there's a prince that is captured by them. And you learned that he'd been captured relatively recently and you learned that the orcs had been defeated in a major battle and that they had been fleeing back into the mountains to try and escape pursuit. You guys reached Hellerfluss, which had been effectively not destroyed, but certainly ravaged by the orcs on their first way through. Orcs, goblins, various other creatures, I should say. And uh, when you reached uh, there, uh, Pre had decided to go out and try and investigate some things. And, uh, in the meantime, um, Shin decided to follow in the form of a squirrel and almost got chewed on by a cat. Um, and that's kind of where we left it. You guys stayed overnight there and I believe you had found... Uh, uh, help to take you into the area. There was a tracker that was going to help you. His name was Colton. That's right, Colton. So, it is, I assume everybody went and had a good sleep, and if you're down anything, which I don't believe any of you are, uh, if you use spells or anything like that, obviously uh, those will be back now. And you were back. This one? No, that was the other one where you were split up for some reason. You guys are in the same little worn out inn, uh, which, if I remember right, like part of the roof was off of and stuff because it was pretty trash. But it was basically the only kind of semi stable building that you guys could stay at at that point. So you wake up the next morning and. All right. What are you going to do? So, am I and uh, Dimitri, are we the only people in the inn since uh, the other two left to sneak off? Well, last night you guys were, you guys had all gone different ways. Like, I think you went upstairs in frustration over your coin issue. Um, yeah. And uh, Dimitri stayed downstairs drinking and carousing until late. Yeah. Right. So and when I you say next, I played uh, played music to get money. That's right. So when, <laughs> when you say it's the next, it's the next morning, like, mm -hmm. are Shin and Pri are they still not back or? Oh no! As far as I know, unless Pri tells me differently, I assume all she did was look around and then come back to where she was staying. I okay. probably would have probably would have stayed out all night, but I'm in. I'm at the front of the inn in the morning, even if I. Didn't stay out. Like if I went back to the end, I'd just be out. Yeah, okay. just waiting. So Shin or right. or Pre can tell me what she's pre been doing. Pre-camped, pre-camped outside the walls. Okay. All right. So two of you stayed at the inn, and uh, two of you didn't. I guess. Okay. Uh, I am gonna come down. Uh. Depending, uh, if I don't see anyone there, I am going to wave down a, a waitress and ask for food, ask okay. for breakfast. All right. Uh, there are obviously, as you enter into the restaurant facility, uh, there is food to be had. 
um, simple stuff at this point. It's it's not winter time, but they're sort of at the low end of the harvest season, and they have supplies. How much? Not how fancy. much would you say? Okay, I'm just gonna wave down a waiter. I'm like, just bring me anything. Okay. Uh, they have porridge, which they bring out. Or you can nope. have like a regular nope, nope. English I, meat. I, I, I don't. If, if she's giving me the offer, I'm like, nope, just give me whatever you want. Okay. So based on that, she brings you a great big spread with like tons of meat and carbohydrates everywhere. And it's it's got <laughs> eggs and all that kind of fun stuff. It's like the tr traditional English breakfast, if you want to call it that. Can you bring me something to wash this down with also? Uh... I don't care. Okay. And then I, I, I hand her a gold coin. This should be enough for all of this. <laughs> she nods quickly as if to say, well, yeah, duh. And uh, right. walks back into the uh, back room, comes out, and she hands you... Mm, I mean... Like a... Kind of a version of tea, I guess I would say. It's warm. All right, I would... I just start eating until they come, so okay. I see my people. All right. So Dimitri would probably come down a little after you, and then he'll see all the food you've ordered. Is this for everybody? Or I will look at him, and there's still some like hint of anger in me, and I'll just kind of, uh, you know how like when you're sitting under a table and like there's if it's there's like a, when the chairs are pushed in, I kick the chair in front of me out as a way of like saying like have a seat, and then I'll I'll push some of the food towards them. And I uh, I I'm gonna wait until he like starts eating. I want be, and I'm gonna say, Dimitri, yeah. I hope I hope you don't try anything like what you did last night again. Uh, he, he kind of looks confused, like he doesn't remember. And then he says, "Oh, I mean, the coin thing? That was that was just an illusion, buddy. I didn't really take your yeah. coin." I'm aware, but this is not something I like to joke about. Do we we if, as long as we have that line in the sand that you don't cross, we're fine. Uh, okay, I mean I can live with that. It's fine. He does seem kind of confused, but he's like... Okay. I, I take my tea and I, and I kind of drink it while just staring at him a little bit. It's fine. I can vote free instead. I, 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 you see me think for a second. I'm like, oh, that'll be entertaining. And I'll kind of just drink. <laughs> and he's never heard from again. Uh... <laughs> okay. Um, right. Shin. Your party is not come out yet. You are standing around outside. It is a crisp morning, but not cold. Wait, were we supposed to meet out front of the inn, or just... As far as I know, no, you guys didn't agree to anything. Okay, yeah, all right. So I'm just, um, whatever, I'll just eat until You're someone chilling. shows up. You're eating. You're doing what you should well, do. Well, no, did... Because someone did talk to Colton, right? I think that was uh, Ed, um, Dimitri. So didn't they set up a time and location of where to meet the next morning well you've picked a great time to ask that question because dimitri's not oh here. yeah I, yeah i just saw him walk. I, just saw him walk. <laughs> I was hoping you remembered john i but, mean right. i might remember but you don't know <laughs> that's all i care about at this point but anyway shin you're here it's cold well cold it's not cold it's kind of an early fall sort of crisp morning see your breath stretch. if you really try Nothing too desperate going on. Uh, Colton it starts to walk up towards you. Nods. Says, I assume the rest of your uh, group is inside. Mm, some of them, probably. We'll, we'll find somebody if we go in there. He looks at you quizzically and says, all right, then. How about we go inside and have a look? I, like, uh, open the door and gesture for him. After you. And he says, all right. 
and he starts to walk forward and enters into the inn and sees Bart and Dimitri sitting there and uh, walks over and without asking starts to eat grabs a plate just starts lumping stuff onto the plate I like before I walk in like look back over my shoulder because if I've been out here all night I probably haven't seen Pre. so not since, like... not since the cat attacked you no yeah. so I'll just take like one last look over the shoulder for her. and if I don't see her walk in okay uh, when Colden starts eating, I'm just, I'm just going to look at him and then kind of look over at uh, Dimitri and then I'll look back at him like, are you the, are you the uh, scout or tracker? His mouth full, Dimitri will give you a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Uh, do I see Shin now? Because you walked in, right? Yeah. All right. And I was like, okay, where where's the other one? I haven't seen her since last night. Okay. Phrase, good question comes to mind. I uh, guess we'll wait until we don't finish eating then. Yeah, she probably won't be too long. Well, uh, while you wait for them, uh, you are sitting around, I guess, just munching and stuff. You see Colton order a couple of... Uh, couple of drinks of uh, tea and then he um, asks for mm-hmm. some ale which he gets brought but not in a cup he's got it in a like a, a container which he pours it into quickly and uh, then puts it on the side of his uh, his uh, belt and says bit of a drinking flask I'm ready for this and uh, uh, can you tell us anything about what we should expect? Well, are any of you dressed for cold weather at all? Uh, I don't have a shirt on. <laughs> I don't... I mean, just normal... Probably not. I'm like, uh, do we... Wait, was it cold like yesterday or last night? Well, it's not cold here, but... Oh, I see. He's like, you're uh, going into the mountains. There's snow on them reefs. Yeah. Uh, okay. Where's the closest place I can buy clothes? Warm clothes. I'm done eating, well, so I might just go grab some. I mean, there's a merchant in town. There's not much left after what happened, but uh, if you really need something, you can go to the uh, over to the. Um, well, is it even called that anymore? Well, you can go to the uh, the the prancing tailor and see if you can pick something up there. Oh man, I made friends with the blacksmith, not the right. Or was that in this town, or was that in? Okay, Other damn it, I should have made first. Oh, okay, all right, uh, I'll look over at the table. I'm like, I'm going to go buy warm clothes. Do you need any? I, like, look down. No, I'll, <laughs> come. I'll come with you. I find Dimitri. it funny that Shin, who was coming from the north, is, like, the least be- prepared for it. Um, okay, Dimitri? Um, Dim- Dimitri has, like, a large overcoat, but he's... He looks up and says, I probably should get maybe a hat and gloves at least. All right. Uh, does that mean you want to come or are you going to sit and wait for pre and we'll, I'll just go grab your stuff? Um, sure. I'll wait for pre if you want. And he slides you some, uh, I'll say he'll slide you like two gold. Okay. I will, more than I that, will take his, I take his hand and I do the thing where I'll, to like measure size. I'm like, hmm. Let's see. All right. That, yeah, his pants a little bit bigger than mine. I'll get gloves that are slightly bigger. And I kind of look over his head a little bit. I'm like, all right, all right fine. And then I was uh, like, Shin, shall we? Yes. Let's go. All right. And I pause for a second. I turn back to Colton. You don't need anything, do you? I assume you're kind of used to this. He gives you a quizzical kind of rock eyebrow look as if to say, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. All righty. Uh, before I had, since I'm going to the store anyways, is there anything else you recommend we purchase? Anybody got camping gear at all? How are you planning on sleeping? I have an adventurer's kit or explorer's kit, whichever one of those. It usually includes like a bedroll and things. It has some basic right, yeah, yeah. so you're probably okay. Uh, I have normal travel accessories, but okay, I will head oh, out. I have a winter blanket. 
Well, there you go. <laughs> all right. So while all this is going on, so two things we're gonna we're gonna kind of go back, I guess, a little bit in time to earlier in the morning. Pre, you are resting. I'm assuming you're just sleeping out in the open, sort of just with your bed roll and that kind of thing, not with like a tent or any of that. No, basically, yeah. I just went and got my basic stuff, and I just camped out. Um, I also went hunting. Okay. All right. Uh, or some small game. Okay. Do you want to roll for me survival, please? See how well that went. 20. Well, it went very well. All right. So, yeah, you got, you know, whatever you want to get, I guess, if you wanted a bunny rabbit or whatever, you know? You... Yeah, just whatever small game was about. Got a yeah. few things. Mm -hmm. And I'm bringing them back into town come early morning light right. to trade them. Okay. As you're doing that and as you're kind of walking back towards town because there's a, a river you can follow, it's pretty easy to tell how to get back there. For you, it's not really a problem. You're pretty good with direction anyway. So, uh, But uh, as you're walking, you kind of feel... Something you haven't felt in probably a very long time. It's something you might not even know you felt before, but you get that kind of feeling like there's something or someone watching you. But it's one of those things where you're not sure from where or how or what. But it's Feels like kinda... somebody's watching me. This isn't your stream. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it feels a bit creepy. Hmm. <clears throat> She'll look around, see if she can spot anything. Okay, if you... That might be giving that feeling. Okay, well, if you want to try, you can always make a check. Uh, insight, or... Yeah, insight, investigation, maybe. Either one of those would possibly work. Or perception. I don't know. Perception what might be actually the best one. Okay. 19. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. So. I'll roll good uh -huh. until it actually matters. Such as. Fair in enough. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So you have kind of something crawling in the back of your head. Like I said, you've got that sense that something is nearby, but you have no concept of what it is. And it's just like. You turn around, you go this way, you kind of go that way, and you're like, you can't see it, but you know it's there. And you, at one point, kind of stop, and you see kind of an outline, I guess, in the morning air, almost like, like as if you see like a shape in the clouds or something, but it's it's almost like there's an absence of shape rather than an actual shape. But it's not like there's a black hole or something. It's hard to describe. But but the one way I guess you could describe it is like you're seeing an outline of something without seeing it. Cue the X Files theme. <laughs> <laughs> do 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 do. Um, <laughs> apparently, my okay. X Files is not good because I did not even get close. <laughs> All right. I, I, I lost the tune too. There you go. That's closer. Um, okay. Um, well, she's going to make note of this, obviously, and just sort of keep an eye on it out of the corner of her eye, I guess, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Um, but you said, like, she's felt this sort of thing before? Well, it would be something that would feel familiar, but in, in ways you're not efficient, you, you can't tell what that is. It's like, it's not okay. something that, that. It's like deja vu, where you okay. have that feeling like you've experienced something before, but you are you have no idea why. Okie dokie. So. Well, she'll, she'll, make, she'll make note of it and, like, basically keep track of it, I guess, if she can. Okay. As best she can. All and right. then make her way back into town. Uh, and, yeah, like I said, she's going to head to uh, the... the, the place that does the the market thing. 
yeah. the make stuff. It, make but, it make but, a trade. Sure. The, the specific person I would give dead animals to for them to skin and stuff. Like a butcher, in other words. The butcher or the person that does the skin stuff with the skin and the... Mm. Mm. Like a furrier, or I can't remember the right. Uh, name. Thank you, Tanner. Tanner, Tanner. there we go. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She'll skin them and trade the skin separately and the meats as well for. Okay. Uh, oh, they'll, excuse me. They'll give you a couple of silver for each pelt. So you might might want to write that down. Yeah. Um, uh... the meat gets you a couple of copper. I don't even know if it's worth it taxidermy no that's different webby oh and i responded to the chat darn it uh, <laughs> um he caught me well, out it's when he poses those questions it catches me out every time um she'll basically trade the the raw meat for cured meat right basically okay. um and about how many pelts do you think i would have you said a couple silver each so uh well i was going on what you said earlier which was two right i think two that's what you okay. said yeah so four silver um <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why I do that. Anyway. Math hard. Okay. So math um, hard. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, so while you're doing that and you're getting engaged in that, uh, because you're kind of close to where the market would be under normal circumstance, you see the other th two people walking towards the, uh, the tailor, which at one time had a big sign out front, but now has just basically got more or less a hand-painted... Uh, little lettering on the front just so that people know where it is now like the door looks like it's been torn apart and put back on um but while you're doing that uh dimitri you yes. are you're still at the the inn correct mm -hmm. finishing up breakfast because <laughs> everyone else left okay so you're eating away while you're eating um, you hear a voice in your head and it says, Dimitri, we received your note. Do you have any further updates? You can reply. Um, I'm assuming this is like a message spell. Yeah. Like a sending spell, basically. You got 25 it. words. I'll say, do I recognize the voice or no? It sounds like the person who sent you on this quest. Okay. I'll say, um, they really need help. If you can go on off with the group to rescue Kidnap Prince will be home soon. Love you. A um, couple minutes later, you get a uh, per quick reply back. Acknowledged. We'll follow up with your recommendations. We'll get back to you shortly should we need anything else. Stay safe. Okay. All right. Shopping pair. You arrive in at the front door of this little shop. Uh, when you do, you can see Pre walking out of what looks to be a open air tanner which, to be perfectly frank, is a stinky, smelly grossness. Um, but that's all they got at the moment, so everybody just has to deal with the smell. Um, um, does, does she look like she has warm clothes on? Pree's nodding. Yes. Okay, then. All right, I'm fine. Then I will enter the door. Well, does, does she make eye contact? I don't know. Do you, Pree? She's unmuted. You got no You're voice. You're muted. I did hit the unmute. Not purposely, but she is watching you from afar. I waved here. Hey. Okay, so 
Um, let's see, do I? Oh, no, one second. Okay. Yeah, I go inside. The I go inside. Okay. I look back and forth from him, and like point to the building we're going in, Dupree. All right. Oh, so, I look for uh, an attendant or cashier or someone. Okay. Uh, as you walk in, there is someone standing there. It's an an elderly dwarf uh, standing behind the counter. Um, it's hard to tell whether they're female or male. They may be neither, for all you know. Um, but the person has very wrinkly hands and uh, is looks very elderly. So if you know dwarf age, that's like super old. Um, and she, or they, I should say, looks up and says, Hello, Sunnies, how can I help you? Uh, uh, in Dwarven, I will ask her, them, uh, I am looking for warm clothing for myself, my associate here, and I also need an extra pair of gloves and a hat for warmth. Ah, uh, you be looking for the mountains, are ya? He's, yes. This person says back to you in Dwarven. I I say in Dwarven. But do you speak Dwarven? <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, I thought you were just. I thought you were just. I thought you were just messing around. I was like, okay. Uh, mm, apparently not. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, we're planning on going to the mountains. Okay. Um. They go into the back. They come out with some rough woolen clothing and. Uh, they say, this here, this might treat you well. It's warm as all can be without it being fur-lined. We do have a bit of fur-lined coats, but uh, if cost is a consideration, this is a good second. And you see it's like a cloak. It's like a woolen cloak. There's a couple of them. How much is this versus how much is the other one? Uh, it's This one's probably running you about... 10 silver, the other would run you closer to a couple of gold. Hey, John. Yep. Uh, do I still have that wolf pelt? Uh, I killed all that right, wolf uh, You did. I, I can't will... remember. Did you give it to the trapper, though? Uh, I, I don't think so, but I don't remember, so that's fine. I can give it to him. I was just going to see if she... It would took too long anyway. Yeah, but... I was going to say, to try and cure that with the amount of time this has taken, I don't know how good it would be at this stage either. But, yeah. I mean, we're talking, will... it's been some days. I will take the the one he recommended for myself. I'll look over at Shin. Which one do you want? Uh, is there a, a darker one? Uh, no, I meant, do you want... Do you want the expensive one or the cheap or more cost efficient one? More cost efficient. Okay, two of those, uh, and they're both brown. Uh, and there's the the optional differences are, I guess, is that, that that you could have one that's brown and you could have one that's gray. There's pretty much not a lot of choice. I look at Bart and I say, I'll, I'll take the gray one. Fine, I'll take the other one. And uh, sorry, Dimitri, I rolled badly for you too. And a pair of the, the less expensive uh, gloves and hat also, please. And uh, she nods and walks into the back, grabs a couple of leather gloves and a, uh, a warmer hat and uh, kind of a thin sort of just a little toque slash talking cap, depending on where you're from. Uh, and tosses it at on the table and says, right, for this whole lot, we're talking probably about five silver. All right, one second. Okay, I will give him... Well, you said five silver? Yes. All right, I'll give him five silver. Okay, takes it. Says, I'll, hand you, I'll hand you a couple of silver pieces. Uh, one second. Yeah, no, uh, just... Uh, no, I don't need it. Okay. <laughs> and I will put. Thanks. I will put on. I will put on my clothes. My clothes, and then I kind of hold the other one, and uh, okay. I'll hand Shin his clothes, and I'll, I'm like, "You need anything else here?" Uh, 
I'm good. The dwarf lady looks at Shin and says, you might want a shirt underneath this cloak. It's not that thick. Uh, all right. I get him a shirt, please. Okay, so she hands you a tunic. It's kind of like a bit nicer make, but nothing terribly thrilling. Um, and it, she's like, one silver for the tunic. I can't do the silver. Okay. I hand her a gold. I hand her a gold instead. What? <laughs> okay. She's not going to complain. She takes the gold. Rolled. And uh, she bites down on it just to make sure. Um, and you see her tap it in a little Ooh. dish. And she kind of stares not, at the do dish. You not, do you not like if you don't like that one, I can give you this one instead. I, I take the gold coin back and I give her another gold coin. Uh, and she does the exact same thing. She says, it's not you, boy. It's it's the fact that uh, some people come in here with their uh, their magics and try and swindle me with pennies. I, I look at her like kind of a deadpan as usual. And I, I, and I say, look at me. Do I look like I do magic? Do I know where you got the gold from, son? At for a second, I'm like, what? I forgot. I, I don't pay attention, so I'm like, where did I get the gold? <laughs> uh, I mean, okay, well. I mean, you could have been swindled. How would I know? All right, fine. I, I take the, the silver that Shin was giving her. I give it to her, and I give her my, that one gold. I'm like, fine. Either way, you can throw away the, the coin and it, walk out. It's okay. She, He's got a face while, for everything. While, while Shin's still standing there, she says, it's, walk out. it's just to detect magic. Okay, never mind. Okay, you guys walk right. out with your booty. All right, is is Pri still there, or is she? Did she leave? You are muted, by the way, Pri. Pri went to get her stuff, so she's gathering up the horses okay. and everything. All right. Uh, do I see where? She, do, can I see where the horses from where we are? Because I don't know where. Yeah. Uh, well, you you guys put them up at a. Uh, at a stable when you got into town, what little stable there is. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, they are, I will say this about the horses, just to be clear, they're because of the cost involved, they're not, like, they're not going to deal with a lot of hard riding. Like, you guys rode them pretty hard to get here. And so keep that in mind. Like, they aren't, like, you bought basically farm horses, not, like, you know, military horses that travel massive distances. So... So they're not going to be doing you loads of good other than just you getting should. you from place to place at a reasonable speed. So just 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 so you have it in the back of your mind, not 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 a criticism of your purchase, but just rather so you understand that they're not, you know, they may not be as effective as you're hoping. We should ask the guide if we even should bring horses because some of the passes in the mountains might be too narrow. Yeah, uh, I head back to the, the inn, and I will walk up to Dimitri, and I will hand him back. Wait, I didn't take your your gold, right, when you when you offered? I, I started isolated across the table. I don't know if you took it or not. Oh, okay. I, uh, let's say I did. I just hand him back the co his gold, and I hand him his clothing, and I look over at the, uh, the uh, tracker, and um, I will ask, uh, we have horses. They're not... Well, to be honest, I don't know much about horses, but will we need horses? Uh, Colton looks at you and he says, well, it depends. If we're traveling into the valleys, it's not going to really matter. But if you're talking going up past that, it's a lot rougher going once you get above the tree line, especially. So it depends on where these feckers are headed. There's nowhere to put our horse to stock our horses up there. Uh, no, lad. This is the last civilization you're gonna run into for a while. How far are you willing to take us? Well, we haven't started yet. I don't know where they've gone, but I'll tell you this much: if these orcs messed our town up something fierce. I'd like to see them put to the sword. If I'm blunt with you, you gonna you gonna use your sword? Uh, I'm a tracker lad. I'm not a fighter. All right. Just, you just make it sure. If you want a sword, I got one that, that won't be used, so you can take that one. You'll note that he has weapons, but he's got like a bow and arrow, and and he has like a little short sword and a dagger, but 
but you don't get the impression at looking at him that he has like a, a bearing of somebody who's done any actual like fighting physically although it's hard to say but he's very thin and kind of reedy okay um well i saw pre out there i'm assuming she is impatient and waiting for us at the horses so if we're already on we leave okay one second i take my armor off put my tunic on put my armor back on and put the big wool coat on okay i'm ready <laughs> all good to go all right fine okay so you guys are preparing to leave dimitri's still in the inn last i heard unless he joined you yeah it was, what no we went in. to the, we, we went to the inn oh you went in the inn because i i heard you went to the inn. i didn't hear you actually had walked in yeah because so. we, we we were talking to colton who was yeah. sitting down eating with uh dimitri Oh, okay. Yeah, he said he gave me back my gold and gave me my hat and gloves. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, my my bad. Um, so, okay, so you guys are preparing. Uh, you know your horses are, are stabled, and you got to decide whether you're going to take them, I guess. Uh, well, uh, I figure we're walking to the horses, and we'll decide there as a group, I guess. Okay. I will say that if you decide to leave them for every day they're here, it will cost you a silver. What, did, what was his recommendation? Uh, his recommendation was is that uh, it it he was unsure. Yeah, I would argue that he's probably like hinting that taking them is a bad idea, just simply because you don't know where you're going to end up. But I would also argue. Them. But I would also argue you can always leave them if you needed to. Like we have five. We have. Five horses, don't we? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, hold up. Even has reasons. Oh, mind. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, free well, our tracker. Our tracker here says we m might not need the horses, but I, well, I don't care. So, what are we? Are we going to ride the horses? Or are we going to walk or what? Faster on a horse. Can always sell them later. Or well, it might not be a way to sell them. The uh, between trapper says the if worse comes to worse, you can, can always just leave eat them. them later. Or those okay. Guys. All right. Pretty expensive uh, meal. Col of. Colton, do you Deeper have a than horse? Stabling them. We have horses. Do you have a horse, or do you want to just ride behind us until we can no longer ride? Or oh, I wasn't gonna take a horse, but if you're offering, I'll take one. Uh, well, that's that one's fair. not mine, but okay. I mean, you have five. You said I heard, so that's, that's yeah, fine. yeah. But I can't, I can't offer a horse that's not mine because she purchased them. But okay, uh, all right, let's. Okay, we we good because yeah. We can distribute start. the supplies I have on the supply horse, and he can ride that one. Yes. Okay, let's cool. Okay. Are you planning to eat these horses? And voice to them because you didn't come to breakfast. Who says I didn't eat already? And she'll pull out the, the cured meat she bought and traded for. You got the, like jerky and various things, so. I'll say you didn't eat. I, 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 look at, I look at Colton <laughs> like, come on, dude, let's, let's go. Start, start <laughs> moving, Colton. <laughs> I point to her food, it's in your hand. You, did, you didn't need it. Pre, Pre just gets her horse and <laughs> redistributes the supplies off the pack horse. Okay. Hands it over to uh, Cole, or whatever his name is. Colton, yeah. And then mounts her horse. Okay. All the while rolling her eyes and shaking her head. Colton Perfect. says, we'll take this at least to the edge of the valleys. And then once we're there, we'll make a decision as to whether to leave them or not. They'll have good grass there. And hopefully they're loyal enough to stick around. And if not, the wolves will get them. Or something worse. Said food. My horse is very vehemently disagreeing with this. <laughs> horse is whinnying like, no, I don't like that. I can't remember if you named these horses. We did not. No, okay. Fair. So right. take, taking these horses, is it going to be faster getting there, John, with these horses? 
Uh, oh, yeah. It'll be faster to okay. get to the starting point, effectively. Uh, because otherwise it's a good trek to the edge of the valley. Because basically what you have to imagine is this is sort of at the edge of the start of the mountainous area. So you're getting to rolling hills, slightly larger foothills. And then it's a good walk in or ride in to get to the area where the actual mountains begin proper. And so as you kind of are moving in, it would take you if you were OK. So by horse, it's going to take you a few couple hours by walking. It would have taken you most of the morning if you didn't like stop and have dinner and buy food and blah, 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 blah. You know, if you'd left at like eight in the morning, it would have taken you until noon to get there by walking. So it, it's a pretty good distance, either which way. So, that being said, um, I would like you to give me a marching order, please. Tracker first. Yeah, he's showing us the way, so you'd be in front. Well, yeah, of course. Um, okay, just to represent. I don't have... I'm going to put him there just to kind of... All right, who's next? I can ride behind him. Okay. Put Shane. Well, is, is there enough to, for us to ride side by side? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, for now, yeah, for sure. Uh, I'll be... I'll go behind Shin then. Okay. So then it's either Pri or Dimitri next. I mean, I would probably, hang, unless Pri's specifically trying to bring up the rear, I would be in the back. But if she does, then I'll stay in the middle. Yeah, Pri, Pri generally takes up the rear. Okay. All right. Okay. So I've just realized I have misspelled your name there, Dimitri, but we'll sort that out later. Uh, okay. So... And she's taking the back just so she can keep an eye out on whatever the hell it is that she can't see. Fair enough. All right. So you guys are traveling into the greater woods and towards the mountain range beyond. As you move, like you said, you'll see things start to get more and more hillier. There's more trees. The tree growth area starts to narrow the trail down, so you are a single file within about an hour of leaving at times. And at other times, you could almost all of you could ride in a, in order together if you wanted. It's, it kind of flitters in and out of that. You see the occasional fox. You know, you've seen like sheep and goats and various animals of various types wandering, but nothing gets really close. And uh, as you look towards the mountain ranges, you see things, but nothing that indicates people as of yet or a derivative of that. Um, it's very... And as you get close to the mountains, the, the wind picks up, the air gets a little chillier. You're definitely seeing your breath a bit more and while there's no snow on the ground it definitely feels considerably colder than it did like even after two hours of riding you can feel both the fact that you're moving up and the fact that it's getting colder as you do um, you then reach the beginnings of what looks like a massive valley between two large mountains the range spreads out so that it's like there's a valley, but then it becomes a mountain that it looks like it's going straight into. And then there's ranges of mountains all the way on the left and the right. And as far as you can see, it's just mountain after mountain after mountain. So you're not sure where these mountain ranges end without traveling through them. If you've traveled through them, you know it's a pretty good distance. But but for anybody who this is their first time here, this would be very intimidating because you can't see what's to the other side. There's no visible easy end point um, as you reach the valley there's a uh, a smaller river coming out of this area uh, might have been the source of a couple of the the smaller rivers that that come out of the mountains in this area that 
divide into bigger ones as they go and combine again. Um, and you guys, as I said, start to see signs that there was a much larger group that had tromped through here at some point because a lot of the area trees look cut down at points and it looks like it's new and not very well done. The, uh, like, if I was to say, you know, think of someone who's not trying to be gentle or not trying to get a clean cut, just hacking away with an axe on a tree, that's kind of what you see a lot of. Like, some of the trees are, they're still, like, quite a big uh, stump, some of which are jagged and kind of torn up. And you can see all of this very clearly, but then it sort of comes to a distinct end the closer to the narrowing of the valley you get. And you see that massive wave of change heading north. Um, Colton gets off the horse at this point, and he says, likely this is where we're going to need to stay off the horses, because A, we want to be quiet, and B... We want to be able to see what's going on. And you can't do that when you're six feet up on a horse. And uh, he jumps down and sets the horse aside and uh, kind of sets it towards the, the edge of the river. And the horse starts drinking water and eating grass. And he starts looking around and you see him trying to figure out kind of directions and various things. It, if anybody wants, they can have a look around. If you want to do any investigation yourself, you're more than welcome. Uh, otherwise, he will take the role for the moment. Um, go ahead. Yeah, we're okay. Go ahead, Austin or Tamara, whomever. I was going to say, if we're, are we, we're relying on him, or are you saying we're looking as well? I don't want to take his role. No, no. I mean, he's he's good at it. But if you if there's things you want to look for, if there's, you know, maybe you've got a background that allows you to note things like Pre, who's got, you know, she's okay. an explorer, so she'd have an ability to detect things that maybe others of you wouldn't with your background. Okay. Also, you don't know how good this guy is. You've just been recommended. Okay. Well, Pri will um, definitely have a look around too, just because she's like, not, well, she whatever that is, she doesn't trust whatever it was that was that she, this morning. Mm, fair so. enough. <laughs> her experience this morning set her on edge, shall we say? Okay. Yes. She, I'm just gonna bring my horse to wherever that guy has his horse, get off it, and just kind of start <laughs> petting it for a little bit. I'm not looking around. Okay. Uh, Dimitri, do you want to use your perception for a minute for me, please? Roll perception, I should say. Okay, 22. That's nice. Uh, you notice that, uh, Colton has moved down the shore. And, uh, you can see him kind of pawing through an area which looks to be opened. And, uh, kind of see him with his fingers kind of touch something softly as if he's trying not to burn himself. Um, Pre, uh, if you want to roll something, I can give you an idea of a few things. Ooh. Well, a 12. Oh, well. Uh, I used them up this morning. Yeah. <laughs> I used up my luck this morning. 12, so yeah. with your 12, you will note that... Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious that what's gone on here, there was an army in here. They were probably the army that came out of the portal. Uh, but you also can tell that it was a number of probably weeks ago when this all happened. Um, and But it's hard to tell with the amount of movement if there's been anything new. And it's just, for you, you look down and you can see tracks upon tracks upon tracks of people or beings. Okay. Um, I'll approach Colton and see what he's looking at. 
Okay, you see him touching some rocks and what looks to be um, some burnt pieces of charcoal and uh, kind of fumbles through it. He kind of squishes one of them up. You kind of hear him go, <laughs> and then he squishes it down and then he kind of tastes it a bit. And uh, then he starts looking and he says, this is new. This isn't this old crap. Something's been here. Not long. Maybe a day, maybe two. Max. The orcs or someone else? Don't know. Can't tell. There's too much clutter. But <clears throat> there weren't much out here. Most of the dwarves and most of us have stayed where we were. Last little while just to protect ourselves. So... And there isn't a normal trade route through this valley. This is more where the outsiders go. Or the so unwanted go, I should say it that way. Most likely we're catching up to them then. Or at least we're in the right direction anyway. Um, he stands up and says, Give me about 15 minutes. I'll go have a look out a little bit. And see if I can try and suss which way they've gone. Okay. So have a seat, have a drink. Don't light any fires. No loud talking. You got it? He leans close. Okay. And he actually puts a thumb up to that. And <laughs> uh, picks himself up. And you see him kind of dust himself off. And he starts wandering to the east toward the valley. Uh, he looks along the river's edge and then sort of crisscrosses back towards the tree line. And you can just see him staring at the ground the whole time. And uh, anybody else want to do anything while you wait for this? Yeah. Uh, okay. While we're waiting for him, like as we're getting, I guess, everything we can salvage off the horses, I'll... Uh... Speak druidic to each horse, basically just telling them that we need to go, which I don't know if they even understand it or whatever. They probably don't. But I'm talking to them in druidic and uh, telling them that we need to go follow these orcs and we'll be back for them uh, if we can. Okay. And I'll leave, I'll leave a druidic message near wherever we leave them uh, saying that these are our horses and if... If you come across them, if found, please return to Shin and Company. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. Uh, if if it's been this long, you're, they're yours. <laughs> Fair enough. So, uh, uh, roll an animal handling check, please. Okay. Unless you have like speak with animals or something. I do not. Uh, okay. They they, I mean, unless these horses for some reason speak druidic, they don't understand what I'm saying. No, but, that's why I'm having you do the animal yeah. handling to see whether or not they kind of get the gist. Eh, 16, I mean, yours sort of nods at you the way horses do sometimes, you know, that little <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> but you don't know if that's like yeah, yeah. scratching himself or what he's doing. So it's just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, as far as you know, sure, he's totally agreed with you. And the rest yeah. of them kind of stare dopily off into the woods and don't really seem to be paying much mind to anything or anyone. Um, okay. So, Dimitri, is there a reason why we rolled prestidigitation or just checking it out? Okay, just checking it out. All right, cool. Um, so, unless there's anything else, about 10 minutes later... Uh, you see him come back out of the woods and he, Colton, looks at you all and says, I think I have a clue where they've gone. Uh, and he says, there was a small group of them not long ago. I'd say less than 10, maybe even less than five of them. They were moving someone who wasn't either fully functional or wasn't willing because he was dragging feet occasionally. And uh, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have even known t that what I was seeing was new. And uh, he uh, points off kind of to a, a, a south 
easterly direction. He says, they look like they were going around that mountain. I can't get far enough without leaving y'all behind, but just from what I can see, that's where I think they're headed. And, Let's go. All right. So with that, he says, we should leave the horses. I don't think they'll be of any use to us now, especially if we're going into the mountain. But I will say this, be careful. Anything could be here. Anything could attack. These mountains are dangerous. They've got animals. They've got monsters. They've got unwanted crawling about everywhere. So don't assume that just because you can't see anything, there isn't something there. Who would ever assume that? No one who's wise enough to travel. And he... Uh, Those people are already dead. Correct. And uh, he turns and picks up his little knickknacks of things and uh, takes a swig of ale and uh, picks up the pace. And you guys start moving off into the forest and into the edge of the mountain range on the edge of the valley. Uh, as you do, um, probably in the first half an hour, you don't really hear anything. You don't really see anything. You just hear birds. Nothing terribly interesting happening. Uh, occasionally, Colton will stop you all with hand motions and look down. And you can see him kind of testing where things are bent, uh, indentations in the ground, ch occasionally checking pieces of what look to you like insignificant things, but to him might be significant and gauges kind of directions and tests the wind and things like that. And then you see him nod and then he starts walking and you guys start following him again. And he generally doesn't say a lot. Uh, but now he's super quiet through all of this. He's only ever gesturing with hand motions and not really speaking. And he likes that. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, and you probably do that for the better part of, I'd say, the next three hours. Just trudging through this area, trying to be quiet as best you can without being slow or slower. Um, and you, as you get further and further in, there's a distinct animal trail that you guys are traveling. And occasionally when you look down, you can kind of notice that there is something there. You can't tell exactly everything about it, but you get the sense occasionally that you can see a boot track here, you know, a piece of, a stick which looks like it had been whittled a little bit here. Another little bit of meat, like an end of a gristle or something, which somebody had been chewing on, tossed into the woods. You can't tell what kind of meat it is, but you can see it. Uh, there's, you know, little signs that something has come this way that isn't obviously animal. A uh, hobbit lay here. Yeah. <laughs> Another here. That's right. Uh, and you continue to follow. And uh, eventually after, basically, once you guys get to a certain point, Colton will slow you down and looks for an open area and sits you down and says, now's a good time as any to eat. It's past the midday anyway, so if we don't eat now, we might not get another chance for a while, so you might want to take an opportunity. You see him reach into his bag, he just grabs a handful of something and just tucks it in his gob and uh, swig alcohol, and then he kind of glances around, and you can kind of get the sense that he's still kind of in his own head trying to figure things out. Um, but if there's anything else you guys want to do, let me know. I'm going to say, well, Pre, the horses are gone, so what are you going to eat? She'll just look at him exactly like this, just... <laughs> tilted head, bit of a smirk, like and yeah. she'll pull out some of her beef jerky and just slowly chew it while maintaining constant eye contact. Hey, uh, pre, I'll trade you a little bit of my rations for some of that beef jerky. I've seen your rations. Yeah. No. Damn. 
Okay. <laughs> Hard <laughs> tack. After a while, after a while, pre just staring, he's gonna like he's gonna break first and like turn away and go get something to eat himself. Like I like he gives you a look like you're not winning, but I I'm giving up. <laughs> you haven't won, but you haven't lost. <laughs> you haven't she'll won, but of, I just... yeah. yeah, she'll just sort of smile a teeny little bit at that. <clears throat> So. And then uh, pull out some water, have some of that, and start getting ready to go again. Okay. Same. All right. So you got all of that kind of done and, and food eaten and different, you know, bit of water here and there and ready to go. And Colton looked like he was ready about 10 minutes before you guys were, and he stands up. And uh, he starts to march forward, and you guys follow again, obviously. And about three hours after, it's been a while. Your feet are starting to get a little sore. And if you're everybody but pre, I guess I would say you, your feet are feeling it a little bit because it's been pretty nonstop. I mean, you only really stopped for this bit of eating, which probably lasted about 20 minutes max. And you've been walking pretty much ever since then. And you're walking uphill a lot of the time. So it's not necessarily the most comfortable. And, you know, you're walking over rocks and various other things and trying to avoid falling into divots and things of that nature. You know, as you're walking in this area, it's not... You can tell that it's it's a natural landscape. There's not a lot of uh, civilization happening here and so there isn't a lot to sort of protect you from the worst parts of things so with that said uh, and because you've been walking uh, with the idea of, I assume of being stealthy I would like you all to roll a stealth check for me please Nice. Natural 20 by Pre for a total of 22. 17. Very nice. 11 and 11. Okay. So um, you guys do pretty well. You're pretty silent. You know, the occasional cracking of, of sticks under the feet of Shin. And, you know, an occasional bit of noise here and there from Bart but for the most part you guys are pretty silent and Pri is you can tell Pri knows this she's done this for years because in the forest she is just you wouldn't even know she was there if you didn't see her kind of thing and uh, Colton as well is very quiet you can tell he's been in this game I mean you knew that before but he's been doing it for years and years so it's pretty obvious that he has been busily doing this and uh, as you get closer to the beginning, or you start to, as the eve day is wearing on and it's getting towards sundown, um, you start to notice that things are starting to go down instead of up. You've been walking up for a good portion of the afternoon and, and late morning, but now... As you get closer to evening, you're going back towards the the valley. You've kind of gone over this little rise, and now you're going back down again. And uh, occasionally it gets a little slippery and a little steep, but it's not too bad. You're not having to go, like, hand and knees and that kind of thing. It's And you're not, like, super speeding up, but you are kind of walking carefully and moving cautiously as you go. And uh, probably about an hour from from f the start of real sunset, like right at the beginning of when the sun is kind of getting to that point where it's in your face, if you were walking westward, it you can hear noises. And from this point, you're not exactly sure where they're from, but... If you want to try and figure any of that out, let me know. Oh, please go investigate that. Okay. Uh, survival checks, please. Or perception. You can use perception if that's better for you. Wow. 
Wow. We're sp we're spending so much time being sneaky that <laughs> yeah yeah you're good at sneaky less good although to be fair to uh, to uh, Shin he's actually did better on this than he did on the other. Mm. Well, you kind of know where it's it's obviously coming from in front of you. You pick that up pretty quickly, and you can hear what sounds like a language that uh, does anybody speak orc here at all. Uh, I don't mm, not chin. <laughs> and nope. Cannot pre. <laughs> All right. So none of you know what's being said, but you hear a, a very guttural um, language coming from kind of back into the valley. Uh, you get the sense that whoever it is doesn't think they're being followed because they're making a bit more noise than somebody who thinks they're being followed would normally make in this circumstance. And you can also hear an occasional crack and a snap and a... <laughs> in the distance. Uh, Colton, e? Colton looks and says, I think that might be your quarry right there. And he points down and says, they're probably about 500 yards that way. And kind of points down into the valley floor. It sounds like they're cutting trees down, probably trying to make a fire. Not the brightest of people. Um, Pre is going to look around and she's going to cast her um, what's it called whatever this is called I don't remember what it's called but the thing where I bless and people get stuff okay so yeah bless I believe is what it's called um, oh, okay. I, I'll I'll double check just to make sure, or you could just cast it. So, um, oh yeah, there's the name Bless. Yes, yeah, it's called it Bless. There, there we, we go. go. Bless. <laughs> there bless. We, everybody knows bless that you, Bless. Bless you. Bless you. And bless you. Okay, so if I remember correctly, with Bless, you have to pick who gets it. Casting time is one action. Uh, uh, up to three creatures I, of my choice within right. range. And I will warn you. It, there is a concentration element for up to a minute, so you must hold your concentration and not get it broken, or otherwise the spell ends for a minute. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. Uh. Do I gotta roll anything to cast that, or does it just cast? No, it, it just casts. It's it's a it's a it just basically gives everybody that you've picked a d4 that they can roll on either. Um, Attack rolls or saving throws. Okay, so you three. So, yeah. So when I you, bless you. So a blessing on you. For anybody you might not, might not be familiar. A blessing on your family. <laughs> yeah, you, you roll your attack, and then you roll a d4 after the fact, and that adds to whatever you've got. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am assuming most people here are familiar with this particular function, but just in case anybody in the audience isn't, there you go. All right, so with that being said, you've cast Bless. You know where they're at. It's You have basically surprise on them, so it's up to you what you want to do. And do we see the prince? Sorry. What's that? Sorry? The, like the, Did you say we saw the prince? The, like the footprints and stuff? Yeah, you can see which way they went. Uh, no, no, no. The prince. Oh, the, the prince. prince. No, you haven't seen anything. You've just heard them. Oh, we just doesn't. Okay, okay, got it. I'm gonna look over at Colton and um. Are you going back now, or are you gonna just wait here? No, oh, I'll, I'll wait. If you need me, I can help. But I'm not real good at the fighting thing. Alrighty. I'm better at hunting deer at... than I am men. Okay, I look over at Pre. I'm like, what do you want to do? Sneak on down there and have a look. 
seems the smartest thing uh, to do. Right. You want to go first? I'm not that good at sneaking. All right. Okay. You guys stay here. I'll have a look. Is anyone else good at sneaking? They can go with her. You guys I'm, stay here. I'm I'll have a look. <laughs> I mean, okay. Dimit Dimitri has a base level of stealth. Yeah. I can be sneaky if we need to. She seems like she wants us to stay here. Okay. All right. Fine. All right. Well, give us a yell or something and we'll come down. Just remember, this spell only lasts for a minute, so if we don't come with you, it's probably going to be wasted. Oh, okay. Should we just go, then? Well, we can all try to sneak up. All right. All right. Rolling stealth. Yep. I turn into a tiger. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you oh, have, we, we, right. Do you have tiger stats? Womp. Yeah. Womp. Okay, good. Aww. Do you know what this tiger stealth is? <laughs> yep. Okay, good. Uh huh. Well, <laughs> pre. Uh, wow. Her own cloak or something. You, I don't know. I like how the stealthy people are the worst rolling so far. <laughs> oh yeah, by a long way. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. So, uh, so um, pre rolled a twelve. Dimitri rolled a ten. Yep. Uh, our boy Bart, who hadn't been out of his town, has rolled a, a 19, and Austin's tiger rolled a 23. Bart doesn't know. Bart, Bart doesn't make a lot of noise, so I'm no. not really. Me, me and Bart go one way. <laughs> you guys head down. As far as I know, you're heading down together, but uh, yeah, there was no comment about you go left, we'll go right. Um, as you make your way down. Uh, I will say that uh, on a couple of occasions, Pre just about fell, and uh, Dimitri did make a bit of a ruckus when he stepped on a little twig that snapped quite loudly, but um, you appear to have gotten away from it. There's nobody coming at you. As you get down into the valley, you get towards a clearing. As you get to this clearing, you can see there's a little creek and there's a bridge and you can see these orcs that are sitting there. And we're going to go to a map. So I just... Oh, uh, no, not a map. It's the map. I'm the map. I'm the oh, map. Didn't mean I'm to do the that. map. I'm the map. <laughs> I meant to do that. All right. Cut the crap, map. Cool. All right. And then we will flip this puppy around. And there's no map on the screen. That's cool. Oh, that's because that's because I needed it to be here, and I forgot to do that. So, whoopsie. Uh, give me one second. We'll have the map on screen. All right, so for those of you who can see what's to be seen, um, you can see these orcs with their quarry, who is a young man who looks to you guys like he's in maybe like late teens, early 20s. Uh, and he is sitting kind of up against this bridge. He looks pretty worn out and like he's been haggard and beaten up a bit um and just kind of like he's there but he's not able to do very much and then these group of orcs which you can tell it one of them is kind of given orders and the other three are just kind of following and doing what they're told And one is definitely bigger than the others. You have the drop on them. What do you want to do? Uh, the, the two that are kind of farther along, you might want to place your characters down. I will say that. Uh, somewhere towards the bottom edge of the trees. 
Uh, the characters are already there, probably. Are they? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're all we're all at the bottom bottom okay. right. All right. Okay. Sorry, I'm just looking at the other map, so I'm not seeing it. Uh, give me a second. All right. So yeah. Okay. I need to zoom out. I'm, a, I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait. Shin is a tiger now. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna grab Shin and I'm gonna look at Pre and Dimitri. I'm gonna point to myself, point to Shin, and we're gonna go. I'm gonna point like right, and then I'm gonna point the, at those two, and I'm point left, and then I kind of like grab Shin and pull him in, in this direction. Okay. Uh, I go. It is at this point that Bart realized he never bought a ranged weapon, so he has to make a mental note to do that. <laughs> nice. Good, pro probably a good idea. Probably a good idea. Just saying. All right. Where did that go? All right. I'm going to wait until f oh, I'm going to wait until someone else attacks since I know I don't have a ranged weapon. Okay. Well, like I said, you got one attack that you can do ahead of time, and then everything else is on initiative. Could How you... fast can lions run or tigers, tigers run? Tigers? I'm within range. All right. <laughs> 40 feet. What is my speed? All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm kind of like looking over my shoulder uh, waiting for the group to to go. Okay. I'll whisper to Pre. Uh, or, I guess, so we're moving this way, over here. I'll whisper. I can try to put them to sleep. That work on an orc. It should. I don't know if it'll work on all four of them. Give it a try, but would it, do you think that'll blah, 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 blah. do you think that would alert them? Probably. Mm. Probably should have discussed that before we separated. Um. <laughs> uh. Okay, she's gonna draw out her javelin. Uh, and say, go for it. All right. Uh, then I will cast sleep directly in the middle of the bridge here. So it'll it'll hit all four. I don't know if it'll actually do anything to them, but we will see. Are you in range? Yeah. Uh, yeah let okay. me see. Okay. How far does this go? 90 feet. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Okay. And what is the uh, the DC on that? Uh, it's not a DC. I'm gonna. Roll. It's not a DC. I hate. I hate the new rules for sleep. That's why I hardly ever use it. Uh, so it's. I got fourteen. I don't know. Can I add bless to that or no? <laughs> uh, no, because it's not a saving throw or an attack. Okay. Yeah. So if anything, uh, it it'll put anything up to fourteen hit points of sleep. So it's probably not going to. Oof. Well. I mean, it does a good job of uh, putting the prince to sleep. No, it wouldn't affect the prince. I can choose who's targeted. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. No, no, none of them. Are, none of them are asleep. <laughs> and then I'll look back well... at sleep. Well, maybe none of them will notice. <laughs> does it look like they noticed? Uh, let's see. Like, does sleep there look so many like ones in, in there? Does sleep look like anything? I never actually bothered to ask. Uh, just make him feel sleepy. I mean, it, there's a verbal component, so I would have had to say something. No, I'm well, looking at the. I had to say it so they can hear you. You usually know when a spell has been cast on you, but no, I'm, try, I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure out if if me and Shin realized that they started. Oh. Um, are you okay? So roll a perception check. Apparently, I can't find their perception. I don't have passive perception listed here for some reason. Eleven, six. Okay, so all right. So Shin, you see the 
closer to orcs um, to you guys kind of stop what they were doing. Especially the big guy. He looks like the middle guy by the prince who is kind of standing by him is uh, definitely looking around. Um, unless there's anything else you guys want to do, we're going to start the round. Uh, well... Yeah, if I see him looking towards yeah. uh, the group, I'm going in and attack him. Okay, all right. Well, um, yeah, because she'll she'll just throw her javelin if she notices that they're like, what the hell? Okay, so throw your javelin. Anybody who's got a ranged attack, I'll allow you to throw one free shot. Can I throw the sword? <laughs> no. Damn no. It. Uh, I mean, you could, but it wouldn't do you much good. Just say it. I could. I could technically throw my pike, can't I? Like a like a yeah, javelin. Yeah, you you can. It's really big, though. Oh no, I would never do it. But I'm just saying technically. I, I mean, could, technically, but... you probably could, but it wouldn't go very far. All I'd right. rather I'd rather throw the, sh the sword. Uh, yeah, yeah, crap. I'm trying to remember. That's damage. So it's just a d20 for the javelin. Plus your dexterity, and if you're proficient. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it should all be I... in your in your sheet there. Yeah, I, I don't understand the sheet. So. Okay, so if you click on where it shows the um There should be a part in the middle that says attacks and spellcasting and the, on the main Yeah, page. I'm looking at it, but it just so Just click on javelin. There's a whole bunch of things. Yeah, just click on the javelin. It's not doing anything. Um I tried that already. Okay, did I put it in? Let room? me try Clicking that one. Nope. Mm, nothing's happening. Like I so tried that already. Like you're you're a fighter. No, because I just did it. <laughs> so I don't know. It I... won't let me like move my character sheet out of. Oh, and now the character sheet disappeared. Hmm. Um. Okay, I think I need to just let me refresh my roll twenty because it's not working sure, right. Sure. Yeah, it may have. Uh, it may have gone down while we were role playing. So I tried to pull my character sheet out of the make its own window and it wouldn't do that either. So I don't know. Let's Fair enough. This works. John, you want me to do my attack? Uh, yeah, I may as well. Okay, that goes. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to uh, try to bite uh, the big orc. There it goes. Hey, there we go. Oh, yep. wow. 25. Okay. You were throwing it at the, the bigger orc, were you? Oh, the closest one to me. Okay. Uh, well, on. that. I got to. That... Get the map so I can see. Hang on. All right. <laughs> hey, Austin, okay, I yeah, think it's only right in front of me. That guy. Okay. All right. So that uh, guy. All right. That hits, by the way. Um, just nice. click on Javelin in the chat, and that will actually roll the, the damage. Nine. Nine. Nice job. Nine. Very good. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can do that here, and you can watch the latest video up here. And if you want to know more about what we do, be sure to check out distractionsmedia.com.